Hello class, welcome to the first day of eighth grade Eureka Math module four. Today we're working on lesson one, the very beginning of the module. So thank you for being here, starting the module off right, getting lesson one done the first day so that you do not fall behind. Module four, lesson one, is all about writing equations using symbols. So we're going to be practicing equations in module four how to write equations, how to solve equations, how to use equations to show real world problems. So you'll need pages one through seven of your module four workbook. You can tear those out. And I'd like to start by writing down some vocabulary words that we'll see in this lesson. We got three vocabulary words from this lesson, equation of variable and consecutive integers. So what I'd like you to do if you're with me live, you've been writing these down for a few minutes, but if you're watching on the video, I would recommend pausing the video right now and writing down these vocabulary terms. Or if you can write fast, you can write while I'm explaining, but it might help you to pause to write them down before I start talking. So pause now so you can write them down and pay attention to what I say about them. Okay, if you pause, you pause. If you did not pause, well, then I hope you can write fast because let's talk about these words. Equation is a mathematical statement with an equal sign. That's the important part for equation. An equation has an equal sign, and it shows that two expressions are equal. On both sides of the equation are e expressions. When we take two expressions and use an equal sign, it makes an equation. Quick, easy way to remember, equations have equal signs. Next vocabulary word is variable, which you've probably heard before. But a variable is a letter or a symbol. Uh, it does not have to be a letter. It can also be a symbol. Like when you've talked about pi, pi is actually a Greek letter, but it is an English symbol. A variable is a letter or symbol that represents an unknown amount. So it's what we use when we do not know what's going to go there in the equation. So today we're going to use variables in equations. And the variables will be the numbers we do not know. Our final vocabulary word is consecutive integers. Consecutive integers are whole numbers that follow each other. So an integer is a whole number. Consecutive just means in order, like one, two, three are consecutive integers because they are whole numbers that go in order. So are like 17, 18, 19, 135, 136, 137. They all are whole numbers. They all go in order. They are consecutive integers. And so we'll be seeing the words consecutive integers. It's very important that you know what they mean when you see them. So those are the three vocabulary words that we are talking about in this lesson. They will, knowing those words will help you with this, will help you be better with this lesson. Uh, hopefully you copy them all down. If you did not, time to pause right now. Go back and copy down the definitions because we are moving on to talk about what we're going to be doing today. Today, we will learn how to rewrite sentences into equations for better understanding to save time, save work, and for easier calculations. So we're going to rewrite sentences. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an English sentence and turn it into a mathematical statement. We're going to turn it into an equation. And the reason we turn sentences into equations is because it makes our life easier. It helps us understand better, helps save time, it's less work to write an equation, and it makes calculations easier, makes solving the things easier. So we are going to re so we're going to start with sentences, and we're going to make equations today. And I'm going to show you how to interpret the sentences into an equation. So we're going. This is really like a translation. Today we're going to practice translating. We're going to translate from English into math language. And math is a language. So, and, and it's easier to do the math if you know the math language. So right now we're going to teach you how to translate a little bit today. Just to prove to you 
that equations make life easier than sentences in math. Math equations are easier. I have example one right here. Example one looks like this. Says a whole number has the property that when the square of half the number is subtracted from five times the number, we get the number itself. That's English. This side, the left side is English. Or you can write like that. This is the math, this is the math version. Which would you rather write down? When you're doing math, would you rather write this down or would you rather write down this? I don't know about you, but this, when I actually wrote this, this was much faster than this. Now, I should have told you this before, you do not have to write this down. If you start writing this down, you can keep going if you'd like, but you do not have to write down example one because that is this is just to show you how much easier for math, speaking math language is better than using English when you're trying to solve math equations. So an equation makes life easier because I took all of these words, and simplified it into one easy to read, easy to write equation. So I would rather work with this one. This side, the right side in the math language will be much easier than in the English for this. If I have to solve this, I want to solve this, I don't want to solve this. The trick today that we're gonna work on is how to change this English into math. How do you translate this into this? Now, this is a really complicated sentence, so I don't. we won't do anything this complicated in class today, but hopefully by the end of module four, you'll be able to take the English, <coughs> excuse me, and translate into math. Right now, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna ask you to pause and if there's anything you did not finish writing down from the notes write them down right now but pause your video go back make sure you have all the notes because when we come back when you unpause we're going to talk about some examples of how to translate english into math okay class hopefully you caught up on your notes you got the vocabulary written down you got the example written down uh we are on a new page of notes right now where we're going to practice in translating three different English sentences into math language. So it will help you to write these down. And if you notice, I kind of double spaced my writing because when I translate, I'm actually going to mark up all this. I'm actually going to change all of, I'm actually going to cross things out. I'm going to add things because I'm going to translate. So this is example two. Paolo has a certain amount of money. If he spends $6, then he has one-fourth of the original amount left. So we're going to take that sentence and turn it into math and a math equation. Going to take that math, going to take that equation, turn, turn, I'm sorry, turn that sentence into an equation. So this requires us to translate, requires us to change English into math. So copy down this sentence so you can make the changes with me. I'm talking a lot right now to give you lots of time to write this sentence down. I left a lot of space. It's like I skipped lines, so you should probably skip lines also. Uh, but let's get started on this. Let's start talking about what these things mean. So how do we change this? What is the first thing we have to do to change this into an equation? Well, step one for all of this, step one is to identify the variable. Identify the variable or identify X because X is the most common variable used. So we need to tell, we need to decide what the variable is. What is the missing amount? What is the missing number? 
Remember in our notes, the variable is what we use for the unknown. So we need to tell everybody what the variable is. So, and I'm just going to use X because most people have agreed that X is a good letter, a good symbol to use for variables. It is probably the most common letter used for variables in math, at least at our level. It's the most common. So what do we want X to be? Well, in this sentence, it says, Paulo has a certain amount of money. If he spends $6, then he has one-fourth of the original amount left. So we need to decide X is Paulo's money. That is the first thing we're going to say. X is Paolo's money. That's what X means. So now in my sentence, I can just say, Paolo has a certain amount of money. I'm going to cross out a certain amount of money and say, pa Paolo has X. I'm translating because I decided that X is and Paolo's money is going to be X. So I don't have to write Paolo's money anymore. I can write X. So every time we talk about Paolo's original money, or the money he has, we can just change it to X. So Paolo has X. If he spends $6, then he has one-fourth of the original amount left. Well, the original amount, we can cross that out because the original amount of money we said was X. So do you see how we already got rid of a bunch of words? Instead of money, we just have X. So Paolo has X. If he spends $6, then he has one-fourth of X. So may, already the sentence is easier to understand. So Paolo starts with X. Then what happens to it? Well, if he spends $6. Well, if he has X, if you have X and you spend $6, you spend six, that means you are getting rid of six dollars. You're losing six dollars. So spending six dollars, cross that out. In math language, spending six dollars means minus six. So Paolo has X minus six. Starts with X minus six. Let's keep translating. Then he has, okay, here we go. Then he has is some special, is a special word phrase that means equals. Remember, we are writing equations. So another step, so we have to identify the variable, and then we find the equals. We find the words that mean equals. So then he has means equals. That is, it's the phrase that means equals. Usually some words that mean equals, and we could add this to our little chart. I'll do a little chart at the top, or I'll do it right here. Equals, sometimes you see the word has means equals. You've probably seen this before, but the word is means equals. So if you see has or is, usually that's where the equal sign goes. So this one is has, so that's where the equal sign goes. So Paolo has X minus 6, and that equals, so X minus 6 equals one-fourth of X. So one-fourth of X of in math usually means multiply. So we get x minus 6 equals 1 fourth times x. So we can write that as an equation. We say x minus 6 equals 1 fourth times x. That's the answer. Paolo's money, he starts with x, he spends $6. After he spends $6, he has one-fourth of the money he started with. Paulo starts with money, 
spend six dollars, he has one fourth of the money he started with. So we took a long English English sentence and turn it into a shorter math sentence, a math equation. You can rewrite it to look like this, because one-fourth of x means just multiply straight across. You get one times x is x, four times one is four. That is our answer. That is how we translate from English into math. Let's do another example, example three. So to start copying down example three so that you can work on it with me. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to uh, change English into an equation. So let's read the sentence. When a fraction of 57 is taken away from 57, what remains exceeds two-thirds of 57 by four. Now there's a lot of words in there. Uh, so let's uh, first find our variable. What do we not know? So remember, step one, we identify the variable. For this one, x is going to be, what do we not know in this? Well, we do not know the fraction. They do not tell us what fraction this is. When a fraction of 57, we don't know what that fraction is. So x is going to be the fraction of 57. So x is just going to be the fraction of 57. That's what x is. So I'm going to cross out fraction of 50, a fraction of 57. So it's going to say when x. So now instead of a fraction of 57, I just have x. It's already making it simpler. And I can do this because I have the power to pick whatever I want x to be. Now, I'd also like to do right now is uh, find the equals. So we identify the variable. Now we need to find the equal sign. Because we are making an equation, there is an equal sign in here. So in our little bubble map here, we have has and is. I'm going to add another word to that. It's basically a fancy word for is, and that's remains. In this sentence, what is, you could say is instead. What is exceeds 2 thirds of 57 by 4. So really, what remains is just a fancy word of say, way of saying is, which means equals. So the remains means equals. So now we have when x is taken away from 57, it equals exceeding 2 thirds of 57 by 4. So let's start changing this into, let's start changing the other pieces into math. So x is taken away from 57. Now this does not mean x minus 57. We is x is taken away from 57, which means we're starting with 57 and taking x away. So this side of the equation is going to be 57 minus x, because x comes away from 57. We start at 57 and we move x away from it. So we have 57 minus x. And that equals. Now this last part is the tricky part. We have one side of the equation. We're halfway done. 57 minus x equals, and we need exceeds 2 thirds of 57 by 4. Well, you should remember that of means multiply. So we know that we are doing 2 thirds times 57. So let's add that, 2 thirds times 57. And I'm going to put it in parentheses because we still have to make room for the 4. So we have, on this side, the equal sign, we have 2 thirds of 57. Now, we know that x, so let's cross that out. 
because we did that part. So we have 57 minus x exceeds this by 4. So two th when x is taken away from 57, this exceeds all of this, the first part, exceeds 2 thirds times 57 by 4, which means this is 4, exceeds means bigger. So this part is bigger by 4. So this part is bigger than this part by 4. So to make it equal, I need to do plus 4 on this side to make it equal. That's what it means. It means that this side, x taken away from 57, is 4 bigger, exceeds is bigger, which means add, is bigger by 4. So this side is bigger than this part that we already changed by 4. I know that might be a little bit confusing, but to, remember in today's lesson, we're just practicing. So if you do not understand that perfectly, it's okay. Just take it slowly. I think the, these examples are going to be more complicated than what we do in the rest of the lesson today. What I'd like you to focus on today, if you're a little bit stuck, focus on these steps right here. Finding your variable and finding where the equals goes. Choose a, choosing a variable and finding where the equals is are great first steps today. Choosing a good variable and finding the equal sign are good steps. Let's work on example four now. The last example we're gonna do before we start working on some exercises. It says the sum, example four says the sum of three consecutive integers is 372. The sum of three consecutive integers is 372. Shorter one, and this also brings up the consecutive integers thing because that was a vocabulary word we need to see it. So let's start with the, let's start where we're supposed to start. Let's identify our variable. What is X going to be? X is what? Well, we have three consecutive integers. So X can only be one thing. This is three numbers. X cannot be all three. X can only be one thing. So I'm gonna say X is the first integer. We have three of them because X, X cannot be first, second, and third. If you're running a race, you cannot get first place, second place, third place. So X cannot be first integer, second integer, and third integer. X can only be the first integer. So that's our variable. X is going to be the first integer. And we also need to find where the equals goes, because that's a good first step. Find the equal sign. And for this one, it's the word is. So I can cross out the word is and put the equal sign. Now, we're in a little bit of a bind here. There's a little bit of a trick because remember, x is only the first integer, so how do we find the second and third one? Well, remember in our vocabulary that consecutive integers follow each other. So if the first number is x, the second integer is going to be x plus 1. Just like if this is 1, 2 is 1, is 1 plus 1. The third integer is going to be x plus 2. So remember, x is the first integer. If we know that's x, we know the, the next integer, the next whole number, we have to add 1 to x. Look at it this way. Let's do some examples so you can see this. If x is 1, then we go 1 plus 1 is 2, and then 1 plus 3, 1 plus 2 is 3. Let's say the first number is 17. 
Well, 17 plus 1 is 18. 17 plus 2 is 19. 17, 18, 19, in order. Let's pretend x is 121. 121 plus 1 is 122. 121 plus 2 is 123. 121, 122, 123. This is how we find consecutive integers, just like that. So x is the first one, but we can use that to find the, other, the number 2 and number 3. So we knew number 1, number two, first integer, second integer, third integer. So the three consecutive integers. So I'm going to cross out three consecutive integers, and I'm going to put x, x plus 1, and x plus 2 because those are the three consecutive integers. I know that was a little bit of a trick, but I just showed you how to use a variable to label consecutive integers. Hopefully that helped. So the three consecutive integers are x, x plus one, x plus two. Here's another word, the sum. You know sum means to add. So we add the three integers, it equals 372. So we take x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. That is the sum. We're adding the three integers. The three integers that we found before is equals 372. And that is our equation right there. The sum, the adding of the three integers is 372. We changed English into math. I know it can be a little bit tricky. I know you might be having trouble on this. Don't worry, we're gonna do a little bit more practice together. Right now, uh, take a little break, pause the video, go back and check your examples. And when you come back, we are going to be working on page one, these five exercises right here. Okay, class, so we did the uh, examples together. Those examples were a little bit complicated, but they introduced you to the idea. I did them for you. Next, we're gonna work on some of the exercises that are actually in your workbook, starting on page one. We got five exercises, five more chances to practice, and these exercises are easier than the examples we did. So you can work ahead if you like and come back and check your answers with me, or you can just follow along with me as I do them because I'm going to do all five of them. And we'll see how we do. So let's start going. Let's get, uh, let's get started so we can finish. Number one, exercise one. We're supposed to write each of the following statements using symbolic language. So that's the fancy way of saying, it. Fancy way of saying we're going to translate from English into math equations. So this says the sum of four consecutive even integers is negative 28. Okay, the sum of four consecutive even integers is negative 28. So first thing we need to say, x is, and there are four consecutive even integers. Now I cannot, say x is all four of them. There's four of them. X can only be one thing. X cannot be four numbers. X can only be one number. So I'm going to say x is the first even integer. X is the first even integer. And then the equal sign is, in this sentence, it's is. Equals is is. Here we go. So right here, I'm going to cross out the is and I'm going to put equals. And I see the sum of, sum of, I'm going to, the sum of just means I'm going to add. So I add four consecutive even integers equals negative 28. So the trick for this one is coming up with the even integers. I know x is going to be the first one. But what's the other three? I only have four. I only have one. I need four. Well, if you remember example four, what we did, we did x, x, and then we did x plus one, and then we did x plus two. 
The trick with that is that was for consecutive integers. This is consecutive even integers. So if the first one is x, remember even, we're skipping a number like even is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So when we're doing evens, we're really counting by twos. So if the first integer is x, the second integer is not x plus 1 because that's going to make an odd number. I need even. So the second one is going to be x plus 2. Then the third integer is not going to be x plus 3 because that's going to give me an odd. I need to do x plus 2 plus 2 more, so x plus 4. And then the fourth even integer, I need to do 2 more because I'm counting by 2s because these are even. So I need to do count by 2 again, x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6. We can even test it if you want. Let's pretend x is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 4 is 6, 2 plus 6 is 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. They are consecutive. They are in order. Consecutive means in order, but they are only the even ones. So that was a little trick. Hopefully you saw the trick. Hopefully you understand the trick. So now my four consecutive even integers are x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6, because there's four of them. So I add these four, and that equals negative 28. So let's just write that down. We do x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 plus x plus 6 equals is negative 28. That's the equation we need. That's it right there. We add the four consecutive even integers. So that's number one done. Number two, a number is four times larger than the square of half the number. So first step, what is x going to be? Well, a number is four times larger than the square of half the number. Well, in this sentence, it just, the number is unknown. So I'm going to say x is the number. x is the number. So I'm going to cross out a number. I'm going to put x. I'm going to cross out the number, and I'm going to put x. x is four times larger than the square of half x. Now the next step is find the equal sign. And this time, the equals is is, right here. Is is going to be equals. x equals 4 times larger than the square of half x. OK, well, now we need to change the rest of it. Let's do 4 times larger. Well, 4 times larger, 4 times larger means multiplication. 4 times larger means we're doing multiplying, 4 times something. What are we multiplying by? 4 times what? 4 times the square of half x. Well, let's do the, because half is closer to x, let's do that first. Half is 1 half. Half x is 1 half x. So those go together. Half x go together. And then we do the square of half x. Square just means an exponent with a 2. So 4 times the square of half x. So what we have is a number x is 4 times larger the square. We put something. we. We put a 2 exponent with something, the square of half x. So half x is just x divided by 2. That's your equation right there. A number is 4 times larger than the square of half the number. x divided by 2 is half the number. 
Half the number means divide by 2. X divide by 2. We take the square of that. We multiply it four times to because it's four times larger than. And that is the number. So that's how we translate. One small piece at a time. Don't get confused by looking at everything. Look at the pieces. And always start closer to the X. Let's do another one. Uh, let's talk about Steven. Steven has some money. If he spends $9, then he will have three-fifths of the amount he started with. So first thing, find what X is. X is Steven's money. So instead of Steven has some money, I'm going to say Steven has X. If he spends $9 and you have know, three-fifths of the amount he started with. Well, the amount he started with is X. He will have three-fifths of the X. And then we need to find the equals. Equals in this one, Stephen has some money. If he spends $9, then he will have. It is he will have. So we cross out then he will have, and that's our equals. So there we go. We found our X's. We found our equals. <clears throat> now let's figure out the rest of the thing. Well, spends $9. Remember, if you're spending $9, you're losing $9. So that's spends $9 means minus $9. So we have X minus 9 equals 3 fifths of X. 3 fifths of X means 3 fifths times X. So now we just write it again. We have, he starts with money. He spends $9. He will have three-fifths of, I'm going to put a dot, X. X minus 9 equals three-fifths times X. That's our equation. It gets easy if you start with X, find the equal sign, and then work with and then find the numbers that fill in the blanks. So start with the variable, find the equal sign, fill in the blank with the numbers and the math operations. So work on number four. The sum of a number squared and three less than twice the number is 129. Okay, that is kind of confusing, so let's make it simpler. Let's start with what is X going to be? X is going to be the number, because we don't know what the number is. We have a number twice the number. The number is unknown. So instead of number, I'm going to put X. Instead of the number, I'm going to put X. OK, and now where is the equal going to be? Equal this time is going to be is. Equals means is, So because look over here. Uh, there's my keyword is means equals. There we go. Now let's see what else we're doing. The sum. We're going to add somewhere. We're going to add. So add x squared. Oh, here we go. x squared. So it's not just x. It's a number squared. So it needs to be x squared. The sum of x squared and 3 less than twice x. Let's Because twice is next to x, twice the number. Twice the number means 2 times. So we have 2x. So we have the sum. So we're going to add two things. We have something plus something is 129. Now it says the sum of x squared. And here we go, 3 less than 2x. So that's, we have to do 3 less than, 3 smaller than 2x. So we start with 2x and we do minus 3. That's the other piece we're adding. The first piece we're adding is the number squared, x squared. And then we do 3 less than twice the number. 3 less than 2x. And all of that is 129. 
So our equation is this. The sum of a number squared and 3 less than twice the number is 129. This can get tricky. Take it slow, piece by piece, and remember, ask for help when you need it. One more to go. Let's do exercise five. Miriam read a book with an unknown number of pages. The first week, she read five less than one-third of the pages. The second week, she read 171 more pages and finished the book. Write an equation that represents the total number of pages in the book. So what do we not know in this? We don't know the pages, the total number of pages. So X is going to be the pages. So Miriam read a book with unknown number of pages. Miriam read a book with X. The first week she read five less than one-third of the pages, one-third of X. The second week, she read 171 more pages and finished the book. So she read for two weeks. So what, so what we need to do is first week, so she finished the book. She finished the book. That's the equal sign. The equal sign means she read all the pages. Finishing the book means she read all the pages. So what we need to do is we need to do the first week plus the second week she read for two weeks and she and then that means after she read she finished the book so that means she read all the pages the first week and the second week means all the pages now we know all the pages is x because that's what we decided over here the second week she read 171 more pages so the second week is just 171. So the first week plus 171 equals all the pages. The missing part we need to find is the first week. So let's focus right up here where it says the first week she read five less than one-third of the pages. One-third of X. Remember, because the pages is X. So this is the first week she read five less than one third of X. So that's we let's do the one third of X just is one third times X, which turns into X over three. So all of it, one third of X, this right here is X over three. So the first week she read five less than x over 3. 5 smaller than x over 3, which means we're starting with x over 3 and we're taking 5 away from it. So the first week is one third of the pages, which is x over 3, and then 5 less than that. 5 pages less than this. So that's the first week. She read one third, 5 less than one-third of the pages. And the second week, she read 171 pages, and she finished all the pages because she finished the book. So we have x over 3 minus 5 plus 171 equals x. That's the equation. One step at a time, and this does take a lot of practice to do. This does take a lot of practice to know how to translate. Just like learning a new language. If you know Spanish, learning English was probably a very tough to do. If you start with English and you had to learn Spanish, it's very tough to learn a new language. So this might be a little challenging. I just want you to take it slow, one piece at a time, and ask for help when you need it. And also practice is super important. So for practice, you're actually going to be working on your problem set. Uh, page two is your lesson summary, where it says find your variables, gives you, it says break it into, so that was step one, find and de define your variables, that means define x, 
And then smaller parts. Always start with smaller parts. If you want more examples, there's, oh, there's the exit ticket that we will save till later. We'll talk about that last. There's more help for you in the homework helper on page five. If you want more help, look at page five, the homework helper. They have six, six examples for you to look at. And they tell, you, they tell you the answer, and they tell you what they were thinking. So work on that. So use the homework helper to, to help you out do your best. And then for more practice, there is the problem set on page 7, where you're going to translate nine sentences into equations. So use the stuff we gave, use the examples I gave you, use the exercises we did, use the homework helper. Remember to start by finding your variable first. Tell me what X is going to mean. Find the equal sign. Look for the, look for the shortcuts. Look for the smaller pieces that you can work in. And remember, all of my answers to the problem set will be online on the Google Classroom. So you can check your answers with mine to see how you're doing, to see if you have mastered it or where you need help with. And remember, I'm still available all day for questions if you need any help on any of the problem set. After you try the problem set and you check your answers with mine, go back to page three and work on your exit ticket. The exit ticket has only two things you need to translate. But my answers to the exit ticket are not online. That's why you need to do the problem set first and feel more comfortable with this. And then after you feel comfortable, do the exit ticket. And remember, take a picture of this exit ticket and put, put turn it in on the Google Classroom. Remember, this is tricky. You are learning a new language. You are translating. So do not try not to get frustrated. Just keep working. Persevere. And remember, if you need any help, ask. Thank you for being here today. Let's thank you for starting lesson one in module four off right. I'll see you for the next lesson.